in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Mama, you may be struggling with four children and none of them seems to have been great. Let them laugh at you. There is a story only you can tell. Continue being diligent, training the children. Let the naysayers keep gossiping. Shame on her. Four children, nobody rising. Don't worry. Let them celebrate their success while you celebrate the art of turning failure to success. Why will the Lord speak to a young virgin through an angel and says, Mary, you are highly favored. And the next thing that follows that woman is pain, controversy. There was nothing in the life of Mary that I have seen that looked like favor. An angel comes from heaven and says, you are highly favored. I would expect the king to call and say, I had a dream. There is free land for you. As soon as Jesus is born, you become tax free. That sounds to me like favor. So God calls car favor. He calls controversy favor. He calls pain favor. Why would you say a woman is high? Ah, God is speaking to someone. Don't listen. You may cry, but don't be embarrassed about your failures again. There is glory through the sky. There is something about the speaking of God, Ba, that until you are at your lowest moment, there is something about the voice of God you cannot hear. There is, there is a pain requirement to hear certain things about God. Tonight's message is very deep. For some of you, you really will not understand it this night. You are too innocent. You have been shielded by the sacrifices of others. You may not really understand this. There is a pain requirement that brings out the clarity and the purity of the voice of God. There is a way a man of God fails and fails and fails in ministry that he goes back and he says, Lord, teach me. When he writes a book about the leadership of the spirit, read it. That pain has purified any flesh and the need to make a name. It's gone. That is the reason why when people go through things and they come out of it, they usually come out with an anointing. Barring for 16 years, laughed at by people. As she gets triplets, it's not only children she got. The day she speaks over you, she will terminate barrenness in a moment. Because every time she sees you like the high priest, she's touched with the feelings of your infirmity. Let me tell you the truth. You see, many of you see today that I pray for people and I'm just speaking and you see the power of God. It's not only prayer and anointing, no. There is a pain requirement that has reached down to the bowels of power and has drawn genuine, authentic spiritual power. When I see oppression, I know because I have been oppressed. Counsel. 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 Is someone hearing? You may need to humble yourself. Seek counsel. Godly counsel. Not on wise counsel. Sit down. There has to be a way about my life. Speak to me, God. Speak to me. Speak to me. Ministry has to work. This thing between me and my wife, we're beating ourselves every day 
and then everybody will enter his room personally and pray in tongues it shouldn't be like that where there is new wine there is new power there is new freedom the kingdom is here i lay down my first time we had our crusade we were owing we were not much things did not go well I knew it was a process but I said Lord we cannot do ministry this way no I don't want to live a life where you are preaching and you are owing you are in trouble many people are, are dying right now there are many preachers that cannot stand on stage and preach People just fall down and die like that because of a pile of problems. And I said, I don't want to have to manipulate people. I, I'm going to encounter a lot of wealthy and influential people. Why do I have to change my sermons? Because I want to attract favor. There has to be a way. Through desire, a man having separated himself. Please hear me. For someone right now, what you are hearing from me is not just a preacher. It is pain giving you counsel. Man of God, the way you are doing ministry, you are only going to end up in jealousy and pain and you will join the queue of frustrated people and you will think everybody went to collect charm from a herbalist. Retrace your step and go back through the power and the dignity of kingdom integrity. Dig that well and find treasures that last. Are we learning? This is more than preaching tonight oh this is the spirit of god speaking to you there are many of you you need to stop what you are doing now stop that business stop that contract whatever just stop and seek counsel because your continuing it is about to reschedule another season of pain listen to me time does not turn ignorance to knowledge time does not turn pain to joy you must bridge time with wisdom. Are we together? Seek counsel. I thought I had God, but the five areas I thought I had God, none of them has produced the result that I want. I think I need to go back and find out. I may be missing something about hearing God. I thought God said I should start ministry. But I started and it looks like it's not God. Let me go back again. Three days before Koinonia would start in Abuja here, I was still on a retreat, re-verifying again. God, please, is it you? Look beyond my humanity and let me hear from you again. If it is not you, I will cancel it. Let's finish up. So number four, counsel from spiritual authorities. Number five, the fifth platform that is available to access the leadings of God is the prophetic ministry. This will be my last for tonight and I want you to please pay attention. The prophetic ministry, both the office of the prophetic and then revelatory gifts. The prophetic ministry is a very unique ministry given by God to the body of Christ because when you look beyond the imperfections and the imbalances around the prophetic, the prophetic is a mysteriously powerful tool that can bring rest and direction, comfort to a man within a moment. Age-long confusion and captivity can come to end in a moment if and when the prophetic is, at, is, at, is administered within its jurisdiction of relevance. An example of the power of the prophetic reflecting the leadings of God. First Samuel chapter 10 beginning from verse 1 to 7 please. First Samuel 10, 1 to 7. 
this was the encounter between Saul and prophet Samuel. The Bible says then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head, the he being Saul, and kissed him and said, is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? Verse 2. When thou art departed from me today, you shall find two men by Rachel's sepulcher in the border of Benjamin at Zelda, and they will say unto thee, the asses which thou wentest to seek have been found. And lo, thy father had left the care of the asses and sorrowed for you, saying, What shall I do? Thinking his son had been devoured maybe by a beast or so. Verse 3. Then thou shalt go forward. That's the assignment of the prophetic. It helps you to go on forward from thence. And thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor. And there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel one carrying three kids and another carrying three loaves of bread and another carrying a bottle of wine verse 4 it says and they shall salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread which thou shalt receive of their hands five and after that you shall come to the hill of God where is the garrison of the Philistines and it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with the psaltery and tablet and pipe and harp before them and they, sh and they shall prophesy. Verse 6 now. It says and the spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. The last verse. It says, and let it be when these signs are come unto you that you shall do as occasion serves you because they have become proof that God is with you. The prophetic ministry is very, very powerful because of its unique ability to access the eyes and the ears of the spirit and to reach into the past and to re reach into the future transport spiritual realities and bring it to you now there are two dimensions of the prophetic as you may have learned foretelling that has to do with declaring things before they happen and forth telling declaring things to make them happen one is revelatory another is creative you need to know this are we together two dimensions two levels of the prophetic there is the prophetic that declares happenings events before they happen it is revelatory there is the prophetic that declares things to make them happen it is creative both are dimensions of the prophetic but now i'm particularly talking about the revelatory dimension of the prophetic another example of this we find maybe for time's sake we may not really be able to read everything is the story of a man prophet called elisha king ben haddad and then one of his boys called Hazael you find that in 2nd Kings chapter 8 from verse 7 2nd Kings chapter 8 from verse 7 Elisha came to Damascus and Ben-Hadad the king of Syria was sick the Bible says it was told him saying the man of God is here verse 8 and the king said unto Hazael Hazael was like an aid to him take due present in the hand and go and give the man of God and inquire of the Lord he said, inquire of the Lord, but through the prophetic, shall I recover from this disease? Have you seen why kings in ancient times were great? Because they didn't take chances. They took advantage of the prophetic. So Hazael went to meet Elisha now and gave him a present. Even every good thing of Damascus, 40 camels burden. Can you imagine just to inquire of a prophet? And he said, Thy son Ben Hadad, king of Syria, had sent me to you, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? This is where I want you to lend me your attention now. Pay attention. See the power of the prophetic. And Elisha said unto him, Go and say to him, Thou mayest certainly recover. But Hazael, let me tell you the truth. I have seen it. He shall die. He said, Listen, I don't want to break his heart. Just tell him he shall recover. But I will tell you the truth. I have seen it as a prophet he shall die now 11 is where my story begins Elisha now turned down his countenance until he was ashamed 
and he started crying. After telling Hazael that, Elisha now starts to cry. And Hazael verse 12 looks at him and he says, My Lord, why are you crying? And he said, Because I have seen the evil that you, Hazael, will bring. You are going to set their strongholds on fire. There are young men you will slay with a sword. You will rip children out of the stomachs of women who are with child. Can you imagine? The prophet was saying, I'm weeping because you, Hazael, as innocent as you look as a messenger now, I have seen by revelation that you will become king and you will be a cruel and a wicked king. I am warning you now. Hear what he said. Hazael, verse 13. Hazael said, but what is your servant a dog that he shall do this great thing? You see, the prophetic has reached into the future and he's saying, young man, you are still surrounded with all kinds of poverty and pain. Your loyalty is not genuine. It's just because you are in a condition, you've not been exposed to the delicacy of the palace. I have seen that there is evil in your heart. Instead of the man to say, pray for me, I don't know my tendencies in the future. He said, the Lord has shown me that thou shalt be king over Syria. When you read that story, the life of Hazael had to be cut short because when he became king, he was cruel and he was wicked. Everything Elisha said that he said he would not do, he did. The prophetic can look at an armed robber today and say, don't throw him completely. There is a prophet in him. The prophetic can see a supposed well-behaved gentleman today and say, this boy needs counseling. He said, no, 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 he's my finest of sons. He said, you don't know what this gentleman can become. The prophetic has a way of reaching to discern the intent in the heart of men that even the careers do not even know is resident within their heart. There is almost nothing happening across the nations of the earth that has not been forewarned by scripture and with the lips of prophets. Some ignored, some received. Now, the prophetic, sadly, just like the apostolic also, has had its abuses and imbalances because, you see, the nature of the prophetic is that because the prophetic appeals to your emotions and your psychology directly, everyone wants a sense of security and certainty. It's a psychological need. So if I prophesy to you right now, and I'm, I'm not just declaring, I call your name and I tell you tomorrow, one billion naira is coming into your account from somebody. You see, you will be excited and afraid and many other things that by the time that one billion comes tomorrow, the next time I say don't travel, you will not travel. Because the memories of the results from the last prophecy, this is what has sadly turned many people in the body of Christ, especially the prophetic community into slaves. These are the imbalances that need to be dealt with because the prophetic has a side effect. The prophetic commands tremendous loyalty because of the result that it produces. And if and when that prophet or the person operating in the prophetic does not fear God sincerely, you can turn God's people into animals. There are marriages today that have broken because of the prophetic. There are children, there are people who have gone out of the will of God because they came to honor the prophetic. So as much as I talk about the prophetic, it should never be ignored. But I can tell you, there are many biblical requirements that need to be in place before you open up your heart to the prophetic. Before I receive from you as a prophetic, as a prophetic person, there are many things I need to look at. Number one, I need to look at the strength of your consecration. Number two, I need to look at your prayer life. Number three, I need to see the supremacy of the word of God at work in your life. If I do not find these things, I do not trust your speaking. What you say does not have to be inaccurate. The margin of error is wide, too wide to be received. It is not the correctness of what you say that makes you an accurate prophet. And it is not the falsehood of what you say that makes you a fake prophet. Are we together? Many of us right now sadly have been victims of the prophetic. The prophetic is powerful. But there are many people who left jobs they should not have left. 
you ask them why did you leave the job he said a prophet came and told me you have the call of god get out of that someone will come and say your wife is a witch for instance i'm not being sarcastic you know i love the body of christ and i love the prophetic community too imagine as a husband you go somewhere and someone secretly calls you and because there's some kind of witchcraft manipulation maybe in your wife's family and that person is not sound with the word to be able to discern what he has seen properly he now says oga you have been staying with a witch in your house i wish you good luck imagine you are such a man ladies and gentlemen and you get home and your wife is happy makes her hair ready to receive you and gives you a big hug and say honey i prepared a special meal for you uh-huh special meal everything you hear you will relate it from the lens of that prophetic what makes the meal special what have i not eaten in these 10 years of marriage you want to kill me let me just say it and you see fight starts there there are people who in one day their entire theology can come to naught because of the presence of the prophetic we must embrace the prophetic some of you here may have been disappointed by the prophetic ministry but let me tell you the truth do not make the mistake that many are making to throw away the prophetic and say it is unnecessary the prophetic till jesus comes will play an active role in destiny actualization however i must tell you the prophetic must submit to the supremacy of the word of god because the prophetic if not managed especially by individuals who do not have consecration and character it is going to turn men into beasts it will cause more havoc than it will cause redemption are we together in acts chapter 11 we're about to pray acts chapter 11 from verse 27 the bible talks about a very powerful prophet called agabus it says and in these days came prophets from jerusalem came what prophets so in the new testament there were prophets not just one came prophets from jerusalem to antioch verse 28 and there stood up one of them called agabus and signified by the spirit that there will be great famine across the world are you seeing the prophetic now the bible says which came to pass in the days of claudius caesar 29 we're reading to 30. then the disciples every man according to his ability determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in judea verse 30 now which they also did and sent to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. That means in a meeting like this, prophets came to Antioch and one of them called Agabus got up and said, listen, God has shown me something that there is coming a famine. How many prophets across the globe cried and began to warn that there will be recession, there will be wars. First, the prophecy of scripture that when the end time is about to come nations will rise against nation is that true that kingdoms will rise against kingdom it is not new it is in your bible but the bible says in matthew 24 that this is only the beginning of the birth pangs i have said it again no matter what kind of fight happens in the world it is not war that will bring jesus back there is only one sign that brings jesus back this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all the nations and then the, earth, the end will come. Everything happening today on earth has happened before. The thing that was is the thing that is. And the thing that is, is the thing that is to come. There is nothing new under the sun. Is it famine? Women ate their children. It's not even gotten that bad. Is it third world nations becoming first world nations? Is it advanced nations retrogressing? Is it leaders being corrupt? Is it corrupt leaders repenting? Is it national redemption? Everything we are seeing is already captured in the prophetic dimension of scripture. But additionally, there have been men and women that God has raised across the globe who have heralded some with uncanny precision, the unfolding of events. Many have been ignored historically men and women have always made it a duty to persecute their saviors 
there are many men and women of God who have won. Many have won in business, in ministry. Here Agabus warned and said so and so would happen. Let's see one more prophecy of Agabus. Acts 21 from verse 10 and 11. Agabus had the courage to even warn Paul. Mighty Paul. It says as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea again a certain prophet named Agabus. 11. The Bible says, and when he was come to us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews in Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. What he said was the truth. But Paul said, listen, I will go through that risk on account of the gospel. I am surrounded by a very prophetic community you can imagine when you are connected to people across the globe there will be a deluge of prophetic words day and night streaming from everywhere and it is my duty under God to use the lens of scripture and decipher that which is for my reception and that which I will ignore but it will be the biggest foolishness of anyone even in this end time to throw the baby and the bath water and say I do not need any prophetic word in the midst of all the false prophecies make sure you don't throw the true one that comes as a bailout system hallelujah God has used me to bring prophetic direction to people and to ministries, to leaders and to kings. I have been directed by myself, myself, by the privilege of the prophetic. I have seen all shades, I have seen all dimensions of the prophetic, believe me. Maybe not all, but I mean I've seen, I've seen, I, I mean that I've seen a vast dimension of the prophetic. I've had the honor of sitting with people, I just returned from Ghana, and you know I, I think the Archbishop is probably one of the spiritual leaders on earth that I know that has raised about the highest diversity of the prophetic community I know you see that is the truth and so when I have the opportunity to sit with them like this usually I would discuss what about the prophetic do I need to learn and I, I could not imagine through my times you know and the relationship with him that the level of spiritual orientation I have received alone about the operation of the prophetic many people who teach about the prophetic are not prophets just because you prophesy does not mean you are a prophet there is the prophetic office given to a man hallelujah we need to pray for all the prophetic and then by extension the apostolic community in this nation and on earth because the prophetic and the apostolic community is much needed but these are the two groups of people that have received the greatest attack by the devil the greatest character flaw has come from these two offices greatest mismanagement in ministry has come from these two offices everyone who is truly called into the apostolic and the prophetic demands and desires your prayer including the person speaking to you you have no idea of the attack that is schemed at the prophetic and the apostolic because of the sensitive nature of the assignment hallelujah we need the prophetic god has called you to be a prophet here your first assignment is to be careful don't go around harassing people with your limited knowledge. There are people who come to church and when everybody is seated, they start moving from row to row. You are Sarah. No, 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 I'm Grace. Say, well, one day you'll be called Sarah. That's what I mean. You are a liar. You are lying there. Instead of you to repent and go back and retrain yourself, it doesn't mean you are false. All kinds of gimmicks and games. If you are not hearing, you are not hearing. You can grow. Are we together? Or those who go to families and harass people. You just knock the door, peace be unto this house. And you say, well, I've been instructed to come and pray with you and have a vigil. You have all kinds of problems and you start harassing people. One of the biggest mistakes of the prophetic is mammon. 
mammon mammon you mix the prophetic and money you are going to destroy yourself maybe god is speaking to someone here there is wealth with the prophetic but not by manipulation the moment you start asking people bring money bring this bring that bring money so that i will see for you so that i will hear for you it's just by the mercy of god now please don't go around condemning people remember both good and bad we are all growing god is helping us so this is not for you to carry tonight's message as a weapon and go and say as you are talking now i already know the person i will call and you go and call somebody and say listen now you have been deceiving me bring all my money all the money 11 million in all return one by that's not what i'm teaching you but you must be very careful the prophetic we must restore the accuracy of priesthood and the sanctity of priesthood are we together there is nothing wrong in blessing a man of god sowing into a man of god's life there is nothing wrong with a man of god challenging you to give provided it's within the boundary of integrity the moment you start playing games and you start scheming and now start adding a lot of prophetic manipulations and then one of the the corruptions of the prophetic is employing extra biblical practices alongside the prophetic even if authentic this is one of the things that has downplayed the purity of the prophetic again like i said when i teach i teach from a standpoint of love it is only God that knows what he has told people. It's not my assignment to condemn, but it's my assignment to bring God's people to order using the reference of doctrine. Are we together now? Yes. There is no amount of prophecy you will receive that has not had its parallel in scripture. Nations were prophesied to by a man and in 24 hours things change. So by the time people start sending you to do all kinds of things, you know i don't want to start mentioning you know the things that i'm talking about there has to be a lot of care and caution now there are prophetic signs there are prophetic tokens yes it is very possible jesus washed put mud in the eyes of someone and said go to salome and wash an angel came and stirred the water in bethesda i understand these things but there is a way that you operate that it is outside of the jurisdiction of scripture you are going to lead people into perdition. Hallelujah. But as far as the leadings of God is concerned, I'm praying even this night that God will raise a caliber, a new generation of prophets in Nigeria and Africa that will be a correction of the mistakes past in the name of Jesus Christ. Most of the apostolic and the prophetic community, I say again, the challenge is usually lack of character, mammon, pride. In many parts of Africa, the crop of prophets that is just a, a, a product, is, is almost a mess. It's not even something to talk about, sincerely. And many are gifted genuinely in terms of the gifting, my goodness. But as beautiful as the gift is, it comes with such an ugly life and a, dispos a disposition that it cancels out the beauty and the purity. The prophetic, the gift will attract people to you. It is your character and stability based on scripture that now glorifies Jesus. Are we together? By the time I prophesy to you and you say, oh, man of God, that's true. You have a company like this i say yes you earned 150 million this month yes sir how did you know i say now now that i've seen that amount you'll be mistaken to think that prophecy, that prophecy will finish with just telling you that amount go and carry 30 million if you don't want to die rush with it and stand in front of my office tomorrow you just bought a jeep yes sir how many three carry two first to my house you have 10 houses yes what are you doing with 10 houses? oh god just said i should build did he tell you one is for you no all those kinds of things i'm not being sarcastic but we need to repent when i say we i add myself in it whether you are innocent or not when you are addressing the body of christ you must include yourself in it too you don't stand from a standpoint of self-righteousness and say we and say them mm -mm. i don't do tell them 
If one fails, all of us failed. If one succeeds, all of us succeeded. Are we together? But ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. It is my prayer that through you or around you, that God will send authentic prophetic voices. Having told you some of these negative parts of the prophetic, I submit to you by God. The day you are privileged to have access to the accurate and accurate prophetic office, balance with scripture, with character, accuracy in hearing, you will a, your lifetime can be downloaded in a moment and you will get up with you will start running like the foxes of Samson you will now know that the reason why you have been marking time is because of lack of hearing there are people who have who have achieved so much in destiny in one year than many have done within two decades because the prophetic God used the prophetic to give them wisdom as much as I prophesy to people, I am a very principal beneficiary of the prophetic. You see, my coming to Abuja, in addition to what God told me, God used a lot of prophets and some of them with precision, I cannot begin to tell you. With accuracy and precision, almost every new season of my life that is about to unfold, there has to be one prophet across the globe somewhere, maybe connected by relationship or even total strangers that God reveals to them. And some of them come with the sincerity of heart and bring that word and it just opens up doors. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Koinonia, please hear me. This end time demands sensitivity in understanding the leadings of the Spirit. If you really want to actualize destiny, for some of us, after this service, you need to use this week to at least have a one day retreat and say, Lord, the way business is not working for me, speak to me what am i not doing well what am i not getting well or are you even in this in the first place when you call on him he will answer if god has helped you here to be a man of god or to be a prophet please i beseech you by the mercies of god if you don't have an answer to people's problems be secured enough to give them intelligence from scripture but don't be under pressure to tell lies there are many times people come to meet me and say, Apostle, I know. And you know, those are the kinds of statements that now massage your ego and you are now tempted to lie. Apostle, I, I traveled all the way from America. I'm here right now. And I knew the moment I see you, one word. Aha. Uh -huh. And you now say, okay. Um, now that you have, you have encouraged me like that, how in the world do I tell you I will go and think about it? And that is why even genuine people, I hope you know lying is not falsehood, it's just sin. Many accurate prophets have lied. The same way many false prophets have told the truth. Hallelujah. We don't lie because we are false. We lie because we are human. He said, God is not a man that he should lie. When they met Balaam, remember that? Let's not go there. Let me just talk about something else. Let me encourage maybe servants of God who are following or those who are here. Please do not be under any pressure to tell lies. If it is something you need to pray about, you can tell the people, please give me some time and let me pray. You may need to consult like doctors do. You see, the doctor will say, okay, allow me. This is new. In my 35 years of practice, I've not seen it like this. Let me call another colleague in India or another colleague somewhere and just send the samples and let's look at it and compare notes. But it's only men of God who are proud. We are know it all. We sit down and die and tell lies rather than just opening your heart to say, listen, I, I may not have clarity about this issue but let another person speak 
Hallelujah. People have lied about election. People have lied about, about uh, the economics. People have lied about so many things. We need to be very careful and not get under pressure. But let me encourage you, do not be a slave to the prophetic. Open up your heart to receive the prophetic within the jurisdiction of his relevance. But hear me, this is what will keep you to the end. The voice of a prophet, no matter how accurate. I hope you know there are many things God said in the Bible that did not come to pass. It does not make, make God a fake prophet. Many, many things he said would come to pass. For instance, it is his desire that all men get saved. Are all men saved? There are people going to hell every day. Is that true? The Lord is my shepherd. We have come thus far by the leadings of the Spirit. I cannot begin to give you instances of the leadings of the Spirit. It's December now, and one of the things I hope to teach you before this year wraps up is the power of retreats. Most of us do not know how to hear a word from the Lord and then to run with it. It is risky to just celebrate Christmas alone. Beautiful Christmas tree, by the way. Let's appreciate our lovely people and the flowers here. Hallelujah. But if all you are thinking about is just celebrating Christmas, eating chicken, cow, and running around, going to visit friends, family, that is wonderful. But there must be something within your heart to say, Lord, I need your leadership. Guide me. I am tired of making mistakes in my life. For someone God is speaking to you, people will not continue to forgive your mistakes forever. There are mistakes you are going to make that may cost you your relevance for the rest of your life. And God himself is calling on you right now. And he's telling you, it is time. There are levels in life. These people are keeping the Christmas tree instead of them to focus on what we are discussing. We just commented the, the tree. It doesn't mean that... Um, are we together? You flog it out with destiny. Lord, I need your leadings. I made certain mistakes before I got married, you may say. But now I have five children. I cannot afford that mistake again. Because while I suffered alone, now there are five people there. I made certain mistakes. We were ten in ministry. But right now is a ministry with branches all over the world. I cannot afford that mistake again. Listen to me. Stagnation, mistakes, unnecessary errors can be eroded in your life if you understand the leadings of the Spirit. The meek will he guide in judgment. There are fathers here who need to just go and sit with your family and say, let's pray. Even though I'm the head of this home, I confess I do not have all the answers. We need to go to the one who is the fountain of wisdom and to hear him speak to us. There are leaders who need to retreat and say, listen, even though we are great leaders, we do not have all the answers. We need to go back and trust God to speak to us. Hallelujah. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever love you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever follow. Seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your ways. For step by step, you lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Step by step, for step by step, you lead me.
step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days take it high for me please he only leads followers it will take beyond being a listener to receive the leadings of the shepherd you see when Jesus came in the New Testament, he said, I am the good shepherd. A shepherd leads sheep. And if you know anything about sheep, sheep does not have horns. They don't have any external system of defense. The only defense of the sheep is the leadership and the security that the shepherd provides. That means when the shepherd is not there, the sheep is exposed to wolves, exposed to lions and all kinds of wild animals listen to me it is a dangerous thing to sojourn this earth just using intellect using brain work your mind is important your brain is important but the bible history and experience have shown that any man who sojourns this complicated destiny not paying attention to the leadings of god will eventually end up in catastrophe. Many began their work arrogantly and even began to clap for themselves before the journey started. Today, many of them have had their heads bent in shame because they've had to learn by pain and by experience that when God does not lead you, you will go nowhere, even if you think you are moving forward. It is by you that I run through a troop. It is by you that I leap over a wall. God is speaking to someone. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. tonight is to declare Lord I am a follower I confess that I cannot lead myself I have attempted to lead myself in politics I have attempted to lead myself in marriage I have attempted to lead myself in business I have attempted to lead myself even in my spiritual sojourn I have attempted to lead myself in ministry is someone praying but I return to you oh captain and guardian of my soul Someone is praying. I make up my mind that beyond a listener, I am a follower. Follower of the leadings of the Spirit. Someone is praying. If I had followed you 20 years ago, I would not be where I am now. For there is a way that seemed right unto a man. The Bible says the end thereof are the ways of death. Some of you have followed friends and associations. Some of you have followed the, the, the philosophies of men. Some of you have followed your ego. Some of you have followed the path of ignorance. But the shepherd is calling you tonight. I am ever willing to lead you. Someone is praying. Pray from the depth of your heart. I make a commitment, oh God, that I will be a follower. I will follow your leadings. I am tired of rigmaroling around the corridors of destiny. It's time for me to make constructive advance spiritually, maritally, financially, ministerially, professionally in my career. Is someone praying? Man of God, pray. Businessman, pray. Family man, pray. Professional, pray. The continuity and the excelling of your destiny depends.
depends, depends, depends on the leadings of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When this ministry started, and even when God started lifting us, I went to the Lord, and you would notice as a ministry, we have never done any conference or any convention. It's unconventional. I mean, a ministry this size, globally speaking, and yet God gave me a word and said, do not. My life is a product of the leadings of the Spirit. When this ministry started, that was the time when most ministries would generate their revenue through audio teachings, tapes, media ministry generally. And the Lord gave me an instruction and said, you will not sell any tape or any teaching, but you will put it online and my angel will take it to the nations. And with the foolishness of that instruction, I obeyed. And the rest, to him be the glory. Please listen to, listen to me. I'm about to pray for you. But I sense very strongly in my heart that there are people here that God is speaking to and saying, listen, you have been ignoring my voice for a long time. You are already getting to a point where you are exhausting the boundary of God's mercy. It is dangerous to be at the other side of God's voice because the voice of God is where his power follows. His power will always go the direction of his voice. Maybe there are people in ministry right now who need to go back and say, Lord, lead me. I'm tired of assumptions. You have done 10 businesses, none of them succeeded. Calm down. What you need is not more capital. What you need is to sit down. Man of God, you may need to sit down. Family man, you may need to sit down. What is wrong? The Bible says, Proverbs 18, 1. Through desire a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. It is okay to not know what is wrong, but at least calm down. For someone God is speaking to you, you are rushing too much. You are jumping from pillar to post. And in your mind, you do not believe anything is wrong. You just believe that maybe they are just like, you need to sit down. Your life is not going forward. There are people who came into this Abuja 10, 20 years ago, respectfully speaking, but until now, there is no single door. At least if one door opens, we can say something is happening. No. You can't be in the middle of that, that kind of plethora of, of, of failure and then just explain it away. No. Something must be wrong. Sometimes pain is a signal. That your destiny is calling you but not that version of you you need to sit down listen there are family people who need to go and sit down and say why is this home not working son fighting with father they get up in the morning he's boxing husband fighting wife beating themselves no you need to sit down there is something about the leadings of the spirit we're ignoring there are people today you find them exhausted. Their entire finances is, is spent on flight fares. Europe today, America today, Abuja tomorrow, Italy next week. What are they looking for? Opportunities. The voice of God can save you that kind of pain. Are we together? Some of you right now are about to do business with armed robbers because you do not care about the voice of God. I don't care. Perhaps that's why God brought you to church tonight. To give you a word of caution that there is a, word, a way that seemeth right unto a man. Maybe there are men of God. Some of you have started fraternizing with wrong groups and wrong relationships. They are beginning to introduce you to extra biblical practices. In a bid to get more money or to get more fame. You are beginning to practice things you know are ungodly. Perhaps God brought you here tonight to tell you, listen, you need to settle down. He brought us to church. We're about to pray. I want you to listen. This is more than a man of God preaching tonight. The good shepherd is calling you. There are whole families that God is calling. 
he called your great grandfather your great grandfather said ignore me I'm a, I'm a professional farmer and he died like that he called on your grandfather your grandfather said no I'm a ritualist I'm a herbalist I, I, I can do this he called on your father for some of you they ignored now he's calling on you help them please do not allow your children suffer because of your pride this is a word that is coming from God to someone do not allow your children suffer because of your pride if you have not got direction stay with God and humble yourself use the keys that I've given to you he's able to breathe upon the sincerity of your meekness and speak to you you can call him in prayer and he can speak to you through his word he can speak to you audibly and directly in your spirit hallelujah he can take advantage of supernatural encounters and speak his will to you and in the multitude of counsel the bible says there is safety he can speak to you through the voice the successes and the pain of many and he can speak to you through the prophetic which one have you ignored which one of these did you laugh at which one of these did you sit at table castigating and tearing down don't mind all these prophets they are all fake people and you are in trouble that only the prophetic can bring out maybe time to retrace your step lovingly and respectfully speaking some of you have ignored counsel nobody talks to you no nobody talks to you I'm a man all by myself after all I'm a millionaire I have money I have this doesn't matter no you are going to crash land that's for sure And some of you have never taken out time to pray for your destiny you have turned men and women of God to slaves man of God I just want to sow a little seed I hope that you'll use it and pray for me this night the covenant of priesthood demands that we pray for all the people under our care but can I tell you there are some of you the, the reason why you are still stagnated is because you have not made up your mind to take your next level serious the day you shot yourself bar for three days and you mean it with God like you shut yourself and say I am fasting only to break at night Lord I am tired of this situation please give me an answer it was God's servant Bishop David Oedipo who shared his story and said that things were not working for him and they decided to set themselves to pray and it was while he was praying God gave him a few keys and one time they were praying in Kaduna and the Lord asked him to come out and he saw a thick layer of darkness and he rebuked it and it rolled away, printed the publicity material and that was the end of it. My teaching tonight is for people who are tired of not producing results, tired of being stagnated. Are you ready to pray? For the next two minutes, I'm going to leave you with God. I'm not going to give you a prayer request. I want you to cry before the God of heaven. Forget that this is forget any other person who is here let it be just you and God you want to kneel down you want to stand for the next two minutes you and the God of your salvation please cry about specific matters of your life man of God pray pray forget the crowd in koinonia this is you and Jesus Christ. Lord, give me direction for the next season of my life. I am tired of rigmaroling around the corridors of destiny. It is time to make constructive advance. Please pray. Spirit of the living God, lead me. I know I am called, but what is my call? Is it an evangelistic call? Is it a pastoral call? I'm tired of being an apostle today, an evangelist tomorrow, a prophet next tomorrow. What have you called me to do? Pray concerning the matters of your life and destiny. Lord, you are my shepherd. 
lead me you are my shepherd lead me the Lord is my shepherd I'm tired of failure I'm tired of stagnation someone pray Lord you are my shepherd guide me no assumptions one more minute someone is crying mama can you cry for your children I didn't give birth to children for sorrow Oh God, guide me. What is their destiny supposed to be like? Politician, pray. Lord, what is the, the blueprint for the next seasons of my life? Lord, guide me. Enough is enough. Someone is praying. Lead me. I access the voice of God. I access the leadership of the good shepherd. Hallelujah. We are still praying. Hallelujah. Please listen. The next prayer point, you are going to say, Lord, every mistake I have made as a result of not subscribing to your leadership, no matter how long it has been, I cry, turn it to my advantage. Is someone ready to pray that prayer? Lift your voice and pray. Marital mistakes, maybe. Ministerial mistakes, maybe. Financial mistakes, maybe. Career mistakes, maybe. Someone pray. Every mistake, every setback, as a result of ignoring your voice, restore to me, oh God, the joy of salvation. The mistake that cost me my job, the mistake that cost me my wife, the mistake that cost me my husband, the mistake that cost me my children the mistake that cost me my the mantle upon my life restore 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 oh god of heaven restore restore harika toshka lika pranda gavaraka toskariata restore in the name of jesus like the hair of samson restore restore honor restore grace restore dignity restore relationships Covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh. You may cry, but make sure you pray. You may cry, but make sure you pray. Something is breaking in your spirit. last prayer point father in the name of Jesus I go forward I go forward tired of stagnation someone prophesy I go forward in ministry I go forward maritally I go forward financially I go forward career-wise every embargo of stagnation 
I crush it by the message of God. Every mistake of the past hindering you from rising, hindering you from thriving, it's time to go forward. Sagabagata palakata praskata bekatosa. Embrakata parakatoska tebelekata. Career mistakes. Lord, I ready to go forward. Ministerial mistakes. Ready to go forward. Marital mistakes. Ready to go forward. Financial mistakes. Ready to go forward. Mistakes as far as your spiritual life is concerned. Ready to go forward. Sabakata barakata pakatos koto prokete. Embrakata barasa braska belakatos koto prokete. Kaparuski ata. One more minute and we're done. Please pray from your heart. Pray from your heart. Don't look around. One more minute. Pray. It's time to go forward by the message of the God of heaven. I'm going forward. Going forward. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press onto the mark of the high calling in Christ. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shout a believing amen. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I want you to carry that mentality all through this week. I am not without guidance. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm about to pray for you now as we wrap up the service but I can tell you this as simple as this service was for someone this will be the koinonia service you will not forget this year please hear me hear me let me tell you something I know about destiny when your mistakes become too many people draw a circle around your life and they avoid you we are humans people make mistakes here and there but when your mistakes, your level, the margin of inaccuracy in your life, when it becomes ever widening, you are failing in everything. People will draw a line around you as though someone who is cursed and just leave you. Yes, you can make ministerial mistakes, marital mistakes, financial mistakes. But when it becomes from one mistake to another, from one pro, there are people who are never free from trouble. As soon as they are coming out, in fact, trouble comes to meet them in another trouble. This is why God sent me tonight. I need to pray for you because there are people who are in a pit right now. It is only prophecy that will bring you out because you are in, you have tried. When you find yourself in a well, the first thing you need to do is to stop digging. You can't keep digging and hoping you will come out. Father, in the name of that is above all names. I stand tonight by the privilege of the anointing that you have given. Anyone who is in any kind of pit right now, marital pit, financial pit, ministerial pit, in the name of Jesus, let the power that raised Christ from the dead bring you out of that pit right now you out of that pit right now bring you out of that pit right now come out of that pit right now hear me everything you had that you thought was God that has been leading you into trouble you have done more than 50 instructions that came from that supposed voice and not one of it has glorified God in your life every demon masquerading as the voice of God confusing you confusing you maritally confusing you financially confusing you spiritually I silence that voice right now 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 The 
the spirits that have hijacked your dreams and visions to the point that you don't even want to dream again because you don't trust what you see for some of you you were accurate in your dreams when God shows you things they happen in the name of Jesus by the blood of the eternal covenant I prophesy to you may your dreams and encounters be purified by the blood may your dreams and encounters be purified by the blood hear me I want to pray a very special prayer my apologies for the time but please listen God is delivering someone anybody here who knowingly or unknowingly have gone to dark powers to get any kind of solution or people went on your behalf I want to release you now listen carefully the Bible says war to them that go to Egypt for help some of you they carried your names and took it to shrines you didn't know because they want you to marry because they want you to have children they want your ministry to thrive or some of you sincerely you were misled by well-intentioned but maybe ignorant people or just wicked friends let's go to this herbalist we will eat this they will buff us with this so that this will happen You cannot go to the devil and soil your hand with him and then suddenly wash your hand and say it's not my business there are rules of engagement no because there are many destinies that have been tied down right now because there are voices and altars saying you can't go you can't go for certain people parents respectfully speaking and with every sense of honor to parents parents please be careful don't allow desperation I want my child to go abroad by fire by force I want my child to marry by fire by force I want my child my daughter to have children by fire by force and sometimes by fire by force has led people someone who say well it's not exactly a herbalist he just knows how to see things Someone is about to be released in the name of Jesus. Any altar that is calling your name right about now, whether it's in the east, the west, the north, or south, anyone on Aparaka Toskiata, in the name of Jesus, I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. I release you now. hear me and if your name was taken there by wicked men to say let me see what will happen that all the ladies in this family will not rise that all the men in this family will rise and fall I stand by the God who sent me any evil doer that took your name to any altar help them please I declare the sword of judgment upon them now help them please Help them please, a sword of judgment upon them now. Whoever has vowed that over their dead body for you to rise, in the name of Jesus, may the ground open and swallow them. And hear me please. If there is anyone here because of your carelessness you are carrying causes from men of God causes from parents causes from innocent people people who stood and spoke maybe your past I'm not I'm not condemning you maybe before you got born again you were a rude and a lawless person no honor to people you could say anything to anyone and someone a mother hit her chest and said what you have done to me to be done to you I want to release you right now because many people don't know why it is not well with them things just tie down their destinies some of you have sat down and gossiped about men of God formed a circle and turned down men of God and the God that sent them was in that meeting watching all of you and in the midst of it you go back now and find out you cannot rise again in the name of Jesus 
I invoke the blood of the eternal covenant every legal access over your life be released from it now be released from it now be released from it now be released from the cause of dishonor be released from the scourging tongues of men final prayer if you come from a family here that they serve idols please hear me you come from a family where your grandfather your father worship idols you see I want to pray and release you because there are sacrifices most people do not know the mystery of blood you don't just slaughter a child or an innocent woman and then you drain the blood and perform sacrifices for 50 years and then just destroy the shrine and say it is over no there are rules of engagement let me release someone now because there are innocent people some of you you were not part of it but that bloodline is holding you and you may not know why you are not rising a man comes to you and says I want to marry you and those spirits manifest you want to rise to a dimension and something pulls you down in the name of Jesus every altar that is speaking against you every blood that is speaking like the blood of Abel I call upon the blood of Jesus to silence that blood right now I invoke the blood of Jesus to silence that blood right now This also has to do with territories. Sacrificed children, killed virgins, killed all kinds of people, killed missionaries. One more time I'm saying it. If there is any blood that is saying, come back when you are going forward. If there is any blood that is saying, come back like your father. I stand tonight, Koinonia, in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to you, go forward, go forward. Go forward, go forward, I release you, 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 go forward. Thank you, Jesus. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. One more time. From the rising of the sun to the setting. To make an altar call right about now in such a powerful service like this there are people right now who are sitting and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you you shouted amen to every prayer except one and the Lord wants you to say amen to that one last prayer to make your relationship right with Jesus let's minimize movement so that we can honor the salvation prayer Whilst you were listening to me, young, old, rich, poor, male, female, on ground here and following online, the Holy Spirit began to speak to you that you must, you need to make it right with Jesus Christ. For others, you want to rededicate your life. You're saying, Apostle, I remember making this decision before, but right now, sincerely, I cannot say my ways are right with God, with Jesus Christ. You are in this auditorium, you are in all the over overflows outside, I'm going to count one to five very quickly for sake of time. I want you to leave your seat and to rush. Come and stand right in front here. And let me pray for you as I lead you to Jesus. Now, don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Don't wait for anyone to be the first. Summon the courage and come. I begin my counting now. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. 
after such a prophetic service you need to make it right with Jesus without confusion remember the intent of this service is to clear all confusion from our life three if you're coming please rush if you're coming from outside make that quickly please let let all of the officials allow them to come in so that koinonia is this the best you can do let's celebrate them thank you thank you jesus said he must be born again the church of the lord jesus christ is where he gives us an opportunity to start afresh again hallelujah now listen to me i salute your courage all of you who have come out and i don't care what has gone right or what has gone wrong i just want you to know that jesus is able to give you a new beginning thank you sir for the courage to come may the lord bless you in the name of jesus may i request that you lift your right hand if you can the lord is giving you a new beginning please say after me loud and clear say lord jesus if you're joining them please join them quickly the prayer has begun tonight i have heard your word i believe in you that you are the son of god forgive my sins i accept you into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i renounce all the hidden works of darkness and i declare that i'm a child of god from tonight until forever i am yours i am your child amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for this one dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.